Good morning everybody! I'm in my jungle on this wintry day and this is what makes it all worthwhile. Uh, these are all my fowls and it's watering day. So on watering day I decided to share with you uh, the 10 most important facts I can give you on raising orchids from the grocery store because all of these except this one are from the grocery store. This is one I ordered as a little tiny baby online oh, a year and a half ago or two years ago. And it's slowly growing and it's healthy and firm and it's got nice little aerial roots. So um, it is Fel Memoria Fel Retic. The rest are grocery stores. They have no other names other than the ones that I gave them. And I'm still giving them. I'm a little behind in that. So, um, it's watering day. So while I uh, uh, tell you a few tips, I'm going to water. And in one sink I have nice warm water and I put in a full sink of water two drops of Schultz's 101510. The second number being the one that is for blooms. And in my watering can, I, and it's just this size, I have put one drop of 1555. The first one being the nitrogen for the, the root growth, the leaves, the greenery. Oh, the last one is, the last one of your numbers is for all over care of your orchid. So uh, you can also use a balanced uh, fertilizer, just equal three numbers. But when you're growing in bark, the little uh, microorganisms that uh, break down the bark, they feed on uh, nitrogen. So quite often when you grow in bark, you need to supply that missing bit of nitrogen that uh, is used up by the microorganisms and the orchids also need some. And I may not be too factual correct, but <laughs> I do my best because I'm not a horticulturist. I'm just uh, in my kitchen at home sharing with you the easiest, simplest way to raise orchids uh, that isn't going to uh, drive you crazy. So here we go. The top 10 tips for grocery store fouls. Okay. Don't let a good looking, beautiful flower fool you. Because the most important part of the plant is the roots. It, the, the orchid could be in disastrous states inside that may not have showed fully on the outside. So remember that. Um, look for roots first and especially aerial roots. Aerial roots will help get that moisture. It'll go through the, the vellum uh, is the outside uh, spongy part of the aerial root. And it'll soak up any water you missed on it or anything it grabs from the air. And even sometimes it may not look all green like uh, some of the roots you see in photos where um, your orchid is in a lot of moss and you're, you have lots of green roots because they're continually moist. These are more like they're out in the jungle and when the moisture comes they'll turn green and then it'll slowly go away. But it's quickly doing its job, it's sucking up that moisture and then the very center is that wiry core that sometimes if you have a rotten root 
you pull all the outside stuff off and you can leave that wiry core. But that wiry core is important to the orchid as our blood supply is to us because the, the vellum and all those spongy layers are uh, sucking up any moisture they can find in the air and they are delivering it to the orchid. So we want healthy roots. It's very important. And uh, also leaves. We want, when you're looking for your orchid, I'm just going to take this one and sit it in the sink while we talk. You want to look for firm leaves. Now if you buy it and you have firm leaves, it's a good thing. But it doesn't mean <laughs> that you don't, oh, I, everything looks healthy, I won't repot it. No. Okay, we'll get into that in a minute. So, you want firm leaves. You don't want any yellow blotches. You don't want any black blotches. And sometimes you look down and a mistake I made one time, if I dug a little further when I was looking at the store, I would have noticed on the monopodial stem a black, black spot and it was soft and it was a black fungus rot. And then you got your work cut for you out for you trying to get that healthy again. So you want healthy, if you're in the store, don't be afraid to take it out its outside, inside pot, and not the inside one, but the outside one, and look as carefully as you possibly can to look for good leaves, no splits, no strange colors, and firmness. If some of them are going limp, then it's a sign that uh, it doesn't mean that orchid is drying out because it's a sign it's not getting enough water or it's getting too much because uh, um, those roots, if they're compacted inside moss, and this is an aerial air plant, then uh, those roots can't do their job and they're rotting and they can't suck up moisture because they're drying out even though they're in soaking wet because they can't do their job. So that being said we did leaves and so what I do is I take my whole flower this is one that I uh, I just got the last video I did when I repotted three orchids this is one of them. The blooms did not fall off. It's still very healthy and doing well. And the big pots are getting watered once a week. Now, um, this one is the one I got at the same time and I repotted it in my uh, second to last video. And uh, it's doing good. But remember on my last video, I said, you know, I don't know if these small pots are um, getting, getting enough uh, water because this one is even thinner than the <laughs> our little Monet pot. I love these. It's a little thinner, so I think it dries out a little quicker. So in the last video, I just dumped it out. You saw me. And it was in full bloom when it was put into bark, and it was in full bloom when I unpotted it in front of you. And look, it, 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 no yellow buds that are falling. They're all doing fine. Oh, there's one bud funny here. It could have been there. But anyway, it's healthy, and uh, it's watering day, so it will so go in here. Now, I know these are all healthy because I look at them regularly. Because every watering day, the leaves get a nice wiping down with water. And you can use a damp paper towel or a makeup pad that you get a whole tube at the dollar store real cheap. And you wipe them down. So when you're doing that, you're always checking to see if there's any scale or anything that doesn't look normal to that plant. And that's another way to get to know your plant. So I got to know that it needed a little extra water halfway through the week. So the
the small pots are getting a little bit of extra water because I check mine out and I get to know them and I know what they need. So this one, of course, <laughs> it is healthy. As you know, this was flowering in December. Um, we've had it over a year, two, uh, two years now. When we first did this, I'm not sure, but uh, they flowered when I got them and then they went through their growth and then they flowered again this winter. And uh, this uh, purple one, it actually uh, finished blooming and then bloomed again on the end. So here we are since December and we're coming into March and I still have beautiful flowers. So I'm going to put this one in the sink also. I, I don't, I try not to let the flowers get wet. So I make sure they're out. And then I have a little, um, I have a little measuring cup that I can just make sure the water's getting in there and I dip over. So if you're not here, <laughs> I quite often, I have a little uh, minute timer and I set it for like five minutes. So while I'm running around, maybe in this sink, I'm doing a bigger plant and uh, I'm soaking those, but I won't worry about timing it right now. So the leaves, that was important. For the next one, number two repot your orchid. Yes, even, okay, I have to show you this. This is from the uh, Oregon Orchid Society. I find a lot of very good information on that, but here it says, uh, grocery store orchids are purchased in poor or old medium and should be repotted as soon as possible. This is their 10 important things. I find the orchid societies, all of them, I, uh, I read blogs on orchid societies and do that, do lots of research, visit other people, but uh, you can read lots of blogs, lots of stuff. They have lots of information, and uh, I find them very good. So, um, repot your orchid. So, as soon as you get home with your orchid, you are going to get your bark and pre soak it. I, as soon as I come home, run out, put my bark how much I need in and soak it for 24 hours the next day I repot it. Now, I use straight fur bark and sometimes I put charcoal in and if you need a little bit, to, if your bark isn't real big, another thing you quite often can add is perlite and as you get to know your orchid, you'll know if you need to add a little extra something for a little bit more moisture or not. But if you're using moss, you're going to be repotting every year for sure because it does get acidic. And uh, I found bark the easiest. I let them go. Uh, once I let one I had in my first paint cans, I didn't have any orchid pots, and we had some old paint cans, and they were plastic. And Jack drilled holes in them. And those ones were in those pots for two years. And they had roots like you wouldn't believe. They were very healthy. Um, sometimes they say uh, small pots. Uh, they like to be in small pots. I have found some of my... Uh, I've got ones in big pots. They're happy. I don't know. I haven't found any difference. The most important things is uh, when they're watered, the media has to be set that it drains fast and thoroughly. And the only thing that's left in there after watering is the humidity from the bark, which is, and the air spaces, because they do need air. And that supplies the humidity for the whole week until the next time you water. But like I say, 
unpot your pot or flower, you know, a month or so after you've got it, maybe the day before watering and see if it's dry like I did. It was dry. It didn't hurt it. Once you're not changing the, the, uh, from moss to bark, which is a shock, that, and because they've been uh, struggling in that pot anyway, then um, it's easier, it's quicker. So we want to repot. Normally, we would repot after they're through their blooming cycle and they're going to start their growth cycle. That's when the leaves will get better or the roots will get better. And sometimes, if you have a plant that uh, it's in bloom, but it, uh, it's still struggling, you feel like maybe the leaves are struggling, then that would be a time that I would cut the spike off and put it in a vase and I would go for a high nitrogen and don't use more than weak, very weak solution, half or a third of what they say. I just use a couple drops because they don't need a lot and uh, the Orchid Society even recommends weekly, weekly and they say that um, because it's a good thing to get in your head but uh, also of those four weeks in a month, miss one fertilizing day and just run water through your orchids to get rid of any acidity that is built up or salt sir. So you, you want to repot your orchid and uh, if it's grocery store right away, if you had it in your home for a while, that's when things get easy. Because that, you've had it longer. Be patient because you've had it longer. Then life gets easy and it's all about enjoying your orchids. So then, um, after you've repotted, and number three on my list is to wipe all your leaves, which I mentioned. So then you have to find your environment for your new orchid. So um, you can twig so many ways depending on what you have in your home. I have a west facing window. It's ideal here in the winter because it's bright and I have lots of space there and uh, I supply humidity with my miserables, which I just love. There's so many ways you can use them by setting a pot on top of them. If you want, that you want to have extra humidity for one reason or another, or uh, then they're still supplying mist to that whole area. And I have two misters on that window going most of the time. And because I buy good ones online um, from House of Hydro, and I don't get paid from House of Hydro, I haven't replaced any of them. And they run from first thing in the morning, say 7 a.m., until uh, after supper. After supper, I usually turn them off. So, uh, so that's good about humidity. So you can twig your humidity. The, and the temperature... A normal household temperature is very good for Phalaenopsis orchids and light. Now, I get lots of light in that window, but we have a lot of dark days here in the winter. So we bought some of that stick-on LED light stripping and put it there. It's full spectrum and it just in the darker days or we just leave them on. They don't use as much power as other lights. And I've noticed a big difference, and I think we enjoy it too, just because we're getting a little extra light too. So uh, you can twig, depending on which area you can have them or what they want to do. And so I don't think that uh, that is a difficult problem. Okay, so set your orchids in their new environment. And don't be moving them around place to place all the time. They like their home buddies. Once they know they're being loved, they like to be left in the same place. So, but when they're in flower, you can 
I often put mine on a table if I have company or just set one up decoratively somewhere. But normally they like the same place. And mine in the summer, because it's a west window, a very hot window. Now when I did that window, I didn't put blinds close to the glass. I have them on the outside. So I can bring those blinds down and have my humidity in there and they get a real humidity back because the blinds hold the humidity in. But because I don't have black, uh, uh, blinds near the glass, once that sun starts to feel hot to my hand, they move out to the patio for the whole summer. And it's a glassed-in patio, glass roof, but we have a black shade cloth over the shelving. That's where they go, and they took heats of over 100 lots of days last summer, and they were fine. I was watering them uh, two days a week and misting them. So there we go with that. So everything's workable that way. So we touched down fertilizer and patience is a big one too. Sometimes people, they, uh, they uh, think, oh no, it looks bad. I got to change it. I got to change the, what they're in. I got to, you know, be patient because what's happened to them and how they've been uh, before you've got them, all that is in effect. So all you can really do is the basics and be patient because they will reward you. Okay, and uh, now the other important thing is do not cut your aerial roots. I hate it when you go buy one and someone has cut the air of the roots. And they do it because they're in cramped surroundings. Uh, they just, uh, so many in one spot. And they don't want the mess of them. They are necessary. They're a part of what your orchid is. They're beautiful. And uh, they do their job. And that's what you want. So, and number eight is to check your orchid after a month or so. Really, I've unpotted them. You've seen me. I've done that more than once, believe me. And uh, mist. Mist regularly in the a.m., early p.m. If you're home, walk around and give those aerial roots a mist. And don't panic if they look white. That's quite normal. They're, they, they like to be misted. They like humidity, but that's not, that, they're not dying, they're just, uh, it's watering day, and, and I miss them probably twice a day, the aerial roots. And uh, they're important, and if you're down to not many roots in the media, they are very important. So, um, the other thing I want to say before I finish watering is, if you have a bedroom, that has some good light in it is also a good place to keep your orchid because orchids give off oxygen at night. They take in uh, the carbon dioxide from us, which is nice because we're around them all the time, so they're getting lots. And then at night, they're letting off the oxygen, which is good for your bedroom. We'll have to sleep, so um, that's all good. And uh, let me see, what else I want to say? I did want to make sure I got that right because I was pointed out that I know uh, the velamen is the outside part of root, not the inside. So it's the part that absorbs the moisture. And uh, I think I messed up on that. <laughs> I knew what it was, but, and, uh, okay. And the other thing is, um, cool night temperatures for two to four weeks of around 55 degrees will help spike your orchids. So the ones of mine that are in growth right now, when my temperature starts to warm up outside in the patio, they'll be the first ones to go out because always at night it's cooler here. I'll make sure it's not freezing. And even if it's the upper 40s, I will leave them out there for a couple weeks. 
And then come the really warmer pot when the other orchids go outside for their growth period, I'll bring those ones in and hope to have spikes for summer. And the, the other thing before I finish my watering, I want to explain what I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I had my three little minis on the bark display. It has been there for a couple years and they weren't dying, but I just, you're always, uh, the bark, I, I won't do it again, unless you're putting them in an aquarium or somewhere where they stay humid. So what I have done is I had sea, sea gull crawfish pie, and fell Amerisocardi, and Herella retrocala. And so for now, I put them in a pot. So there they are. They're not dried out. They don't, they look fine. But I think I've got them sitting lower in the pot so that um, they have a little more humidity around them. And I think it's going to be a healthier situation. And if they start to really multiply and spread, then I'll put them in their own pot. But for now, they're together because they were together. And uh, I can miss them when I want. And it's not extra, extra work. And so I've done that because the Herella red turkella had flowered, but uh, the other two hadn't. And so that I'm hoping to uh, improve on that. And uh, the one that I broke the branch has still got the straw on it. Do you know it, it stayed? I mean, it's amazing. It's hanging by a thread in there unless it started to heal, but I'm not even going to look. So um, I'm going to finish this watering, and uh, um, I hope... This has helped some of you somewhat, and thanks for all the questions, the comments, and thanks for subscribing, and I'm happy to visit with you, and I hope I can help you raise orchids like this. Thank you.